You know, I've never been much of a testing guy, but ever since I discovered VTest, I've been loving writing tests. And today I want to talk about VTest, how I set it up and why I love it so much. So before we actually jump into the actual loving part, uh, I want to show you something on their website and that's their browser mode. VTest has a browser mode and still kind of experimental. But what it does, it runs all of your tests in the actual browser. So depending on how you set it up, it either starts up something like Chrome or you can run it with Playwright or anything else like uh, WebDriver IO. It really depends on you. There's also guides on how to set it up with different runners like WebDriver and how you would set it up if you wanted to do something else. They're also working on externalizing this so you can also run it in stuff like stack blitz and all the other good stuff but what i wanted to show you is how you set it up so in your define config you just say browser and if you don't specify a provider by default it starts your actual browser so chrome if you provide a provider it either starts playwright or webdriver io i think there are no other options than making of this video and then you can enable or disable it. You can set the name of the browser and you can do a bunch of other stuff. You also can configure plugins and everything you can do with Vite. So stuff like View or I don't know, Solid or whatever you use, Svelte, whatever. And then there's another trick in setting it up and that's using workspaces. And the workspaces are kind of like mono repositories for each workspace defines its own environment so for example here the highlighted one is a node environment and it runs inside of a node environment and then we have the other one that actually runs in the browser environment and what we're gonna do today and also you have all of these provider options you can set the context you can set reduce motion what the default theme is, the geolocation, can do a lot of stuff. You can check Playwright to see what it can do. Or you can also check WebDriver IO, depending on what you use. You also have these helper types here to help you type it. I'm not gonna go through all of this, but you have also browser compatibility here if you wanna know which browsers are supported, how you run tests. You can also run it in headless mode, as you can also do with Playwright, and you can also configure when to run it headlessly. And there's a bunch of other goodies here that you can go through yourself. You also have helpers for all the major frameworks and how to run it. But what I'm going to be talking about today mainly is how to use it with React Router, or more specifically React Router version 7 framework mode. So let's jump into the code base and I can show you what I've built. Alrighty, so if you don't know, my company has a stack for React Router version 7 and that's the base stack. And what we actually do is we make a stack for you that you can use as either a reference on how to implement stuff or you can use it to quick start your project. It's not really that opinionated, it's meant to be used across every project so it focuses more on the high level stuff. And this is the perfect candidate for that because what we want to do is help you set up tests. And how we do that is with these three commands. So we have vtest run, the browser headless, vtest and vtest run coverage. So the commands are test, test UI and test coverage. And the cool thing about these three is if I run it right now, and let me just expand the terminal so you can see it better. So if I do p test, and run it, you can see that it ran four suits. The first suit ran the server tests here. So i18.server.test, so that's this file. And this ran in a node environment. Then we have the app utilcss.test, and this ran also in the node environment. And then you can see that there's another file that's identical to the server tests but it ran out of browser tests. And if I open this file, you can see that the tests that were ran are identical to the one above. So you might be thinking, hey, this is running my tests twice, why is that? Well, the reason behind it is because the first test suit runs it in a node environment, so a node server, if you will. And then the second one runs it in a browser environment, so a browser that's rendered. 
So why this is cool is because you run it across two different environments and you can assure that all the utilities that are, for example, meant to be used on the server and on the client actually work in both contexts. So you won't have any surprises where, for example, if this CSS.TS exported a function that only worked on the server, it would crash in the browser and then you would have no surprise if you tried to use it on the browser and it crashed, you wouldn't be wondering why the tests passed, but it doesn't work because it ran in both environments. And then you have the last one here and this only runs in the browser. And if I actually look at this render stub here, that comes from the setup file. And we won't go into the setup file just yet. I first want to show you the vtest config. So the vtest config here is pretty simple. So I define a plugin and the plugin is TS config pads. So this allows you to use aliases. So for example, if I open TS config and I go here, so it just uh, populates these pads. And if you have an import that starts with this, the TypeScript that's running it will know where the import is coming from. So that's the plugin. And you have the test here. And then I set globals to true, so I can use vtest globals. CSS to true, so it renders the CSS when ren rendering in the browser. And then I have the coverage here. So I just say, hey, don't output the coverage for the whole project. You can set this to true. Then I say include the whole app. And here I say, okay, report even if it, the tests fail. And I want these kinds of reports. And it's pretty simple. But the cool thing that happens after this is the vtest.workspace file. And inside of here, I have this little trick to figure out if the browser.headless is included. And then I set it to the browser's config. The reason I do this is because for some reason this flag doesn't work properly with vtest at the time of filming. So I'm hoping this will completely be removed in the future so I can just remove it. But for now, I will leave it in. And then I define two workspaces. The first one is the server environment, and this includes both the .server files and the generic files. And it excludes the .browser files because we want to run them in the node environment only. And then the second one also runs the browser, but it excludes the server files. So we don't want to run server specific stuff in the browser. We want to run it on the server. So this is why we exclude it. And then we use the setup file here. So setup.browser, which we're going to check pretty much in like a minute. But the important thing here is we set the name to browser tests and that's the name here. And on top here, if I look at this, it has the server test. These are the server tests. So this extends the vtest config that we have here and it overrides everything that's not defined inside of here. So, or rather it adds on top of it. So it merges the configs. So this allows you to set up stuff like coverage here and then inject it into here and it reports the coverage for the whole project. And the cool thing about these test suits is that they use Playwright here and they use the Chromium browser. And we say that the headless is either headless when defined or in CI and they are always enabled. So the cool thing about these tests is if I run them again, if we check the package JSON, the test UI just runs vtest. And if I run that, so p test UI, you can see that I've opened up the UI mode and you can't see the URL, but the URL is localhost 63315. And you can see all my tests here. So you can see the server tests, the browser tests, and then again, the server tests. And you can inspect which tests passed, which failed. You can inspect what was rendered in the browser. So for example, I can select different screens here. And also this shows you the general info about the test suits. And then if I, if some of these failed, I could filter them by failed or passed or skipped or whatever. And as you can see, the actual test looks like this. So this is what was rendered by the test suit. And now that I'm back in VS code, you can see that I ran the test in an actual browser. They use the test suit configuration from vtest of workspaces. They split the workspaces into two. One is ran on the server, one is ran on the client. 
And what this assures is that, first of all, your generic utilities or whatever the code is, runs in both environments. The browser specific stuff runs in the actual browser, so there's no ugly surprises. Like you, for example, run something in Happy DOM and the Happy DOM just mocks the actual browser, so it doesn't really assure that it's gonna work there. But this does because this actually runs in the browser. And then lastly, you have your server utilities that are supposed to be only on the server. And this is ran in a node environment that's a server run and you're assured that it's all gonna work. And a cool thing that you can do later on, for example, you can add another environment. So you have these tools. And for example, you wanted to do integration tests, you can add another one here and then run your browser tests, your server tests, and your integration tests at the same time. And you can define different stuff for each workspace. So for example, if you wanted to run integration tests, you could do something like this. And then for example, you can say test and then set up files. And then for example, here you start the database or something and you can just keep on adding specific test suits here. You could even add end-to-end -end tests if you want to run those as well. And because you're already using Playwright and the browser, you can even run them in the browser mode. That's another cool thing you can do. And the opportunities are endless. And Vita's workspace is, is really awesome and you really need to give it a go because it offers you so much power. And what's important to know is that the coverage needs to be defined in the Vita's config because otherwise it won't work. It's just the way they set it up. And that's it. You actually get three different test suits for the price of one, you run all the stuff you need in specific environments that are supposed to work and it's so easy to set up and it's so cool because you can see your actual tests and for example if a test fails you can see what happened in the browser and you can also use playwright's powerful queries to find text in the browser and click on it and stuff like that that's also another pro that you get and the last thing i want to show you is the actual setup browser part and here because we're running tests in react router first of all i import the tailing file and this will build your styles for the project that's the first cool thing the second cool thing is I import create routes tab from React Router and I have this custom utility that you can pick up from the base tag and it takes props and entries. These come from the actual create routes tab and it allows you to create props and entries. And then this is also useful for checking different languages. So for example, let's say you wanted to render something in English and then render it in German and see if it works or some other language. You can pass in the language as a param and also the namespaces that you want to test and stuff like that. And it's really easy and flexible to do. And what I do here is I set up the entries for you. So what I do is I create the root entry and then whatever you pass in, I give it as children to here. So what you're going to do is you're going to have this i18x provider. It's going to wrap your outlet and whatever you pass into children is going to be rendered inside of the outlet here. And then you can do a lot of cool stuff with it, like test your routes and test your sub routes. You can also pass initial entries here. By default, it starts at the root route here, but you can set it, for example, on login or whatever. And then I create the stub and then I render it. But this render comes from Vita's browser React and this actually renders it in an actual browser. So not in a happy DOM or not JS DOM, an actual browser. And that's really cool. And you get back the render screen and then it has a bunch of utilities. For example, it has the container, it has the base element you get a lot of get queries so basically it returns something that would be returned by playwright and then i give it to every test before it runs so every dot browser file has this render stub inside of the context and then for example here i'm rendering the home route on the pad and i render the the module so the module is imported from the route so this is our route here and i render that as a component and then i just say hey get me the text on the screen 
make sure it's there and it's in English. And for example, in the second test, I want to test that it works in another language. I specify the i18 config, I render it, and then as you can see, I find by text and it actually works with a different language. And that is pretty cool. And that's my whole setup for testing. It's pretty cool, it's pretty easy to set up, and the retest is amazing. And all of this runs so quickly in your browser that it's not even a problem because, for example, we can see that I ran this in 2.5 seconds. And if you're using something like Jest, it's slower than that and it actually renders in a virtual DOM. I mean, not a virtual DOM, but like a not a real DOM. So this is pretty, pretty fast and it assures you that your code actually works the way it's supposed to work. And I think that's pretty awesome. And that's it for today. That's all I wanted to show you. If you want to check out the base stack, you can check it at forge42 slash base stack. I hope you enjoyed this one. Now for the YouTube stuff, like the video, comment on it, share it with others, let me know what you think in the comment. And I'm gonna link the base tag down below if you're interested. And that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Bye!